everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on Death Parade Episode 9. Man, last episode was really good, like the rule of eight, not letting us down. And I, I really, really was excited about Episode 8. We got to meet uh, Detective Tatsumi, as well as Shimada, who is this young man. There's this mystery going on about them, like they're both murderers, but we know we know that Shimada has, mur has murdered somebody, but we don't know who the detective has murdered yet, but the detective is wanting to murder whoever murdered his wife. So there's this big mystery going on and we only know so much of the details, but Deckham and the black haired girl know everything. So it's like, what is happening? And we're on episode nine. There's only 12 episodes in this series. So clearly, narratively, what would make sense is that the results of this episode, since it's a two-parter, are going to feed into the final, because it's going to be 10, 11, and 12, the final three episodes, right? That that would make sense, right? That those these events are going to feed into the final three episodes, right? Because I don't know, this series could do a number of different things. It could either, either it's going to finish up this episode, and then we're going to have, like, maybe two episodic things. I, I want to say that, though... Episodes 11 and 12, usually when you have a 12 episode series, like a very short series like this, usually the last two episodes are kind of like two parters, right? So either it's one of a few things. Either this episode is going to conclude the Shimada and Tatsumi thing, and then we're going to have like an episode setting up the final two parter, or this could be like part two of three, and then it's going to lead into the final two parter, or we're going to have this episode 10, 11, and then 12 is going to be a big thing. I, I don't know. The fact this series is so short makes me kind of anxious about it because I'm like, I don't know what to expect. But we've been given just enough information about Tatsumi and Shimada to make a guess at what's going on. But there's still a lot of mystery and I'm not sure what to expect outside of that. So it's very interesting, basically. <laughs> basically, lots of interesting things going on. I don't know what to make of it, but... I'm really excited, right? So I wanted to give a really quick shout out over to Patreon to thank patrons for helping to support me and doing what I love doing, which is reacting to these shows. Um, those that are in the philanthropy tier, they get shout outs on my video each week. So I want to give a special shout out to Edgar, to Anime Annie, to Tyrone Tyrone, to Dana, to Nameless Monster, to Shimoyama, to Be Happy, to Alex Cornejo, Translucent Men, Eric, Sunspots, and Isabel. Thank you all so much for supporting me and doing so much that is just beyond, you know, what 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 anybody would do to help support me in doing what I, I love doing and talking about this series. And so I really, really appreciate it. So to all of my patrons and to everyone on YouTube and especially the philanthropy cheer on Patreon, all of my love. Thank you all so much. But yeah, I'm really excited. I, I don't know what to expect out of this episode and I the, how they're going to conclude this. If we are going to conclude it this episode, there's a lot left unsaid, but we're going to find out y'all and I'm freaking excited. So let's not waste any more time, shall we? And we're going to start this here in three, two, one, and... Well, we just went from like a happy, fun OP to really dark shit in like, ten, like two seconds. Oh my god. Ah. I, I'm pretty sure they both went to hell. For the record, since since the elevator, since the only thing from the elevator that we saw at the end was, I think they both got sent to the void because all we saw at the end was the mask of hell and that was it. Damn. Damn. I, I fell for the black haired girl because she was trying her hardest to reach them. And the talk no jutsu was not going to work. At least her talk no jutsu didn't because Tatsumi, oh my god, I... The twists and turns in this episode were really something else, especially with the detective. Like, I, I like that back in the last episode, my first guess was like, oh, the detective's the murderer. He's the, he turns out to be the really jaded one. But then the, um, but then Shimada ends up in the same boat because he just can't let go. Because he just can't, he can't do the bigger thing and just let it go, right? He, he succumbs to everything on there. So man, I'll go through this episode. I... The events of this episode were really interesting. And we started out the episode with with him saying that he was going to protect his sister. And the, the the crazy thing is, at the end, he's like, oh, I'll protect you again. And he has that, like, wicked, evil smile on his face. And I was like, dude, you're not protecting her 
by torturing him. He's already dead. I was just like, but humans are fickle. And like the black haired girl says to Deckham, they are easily, easily angered, easily upset. And they're not as complex as you think. They're, they can be pretty simple. Humanity can be pretty simple at times. And all you have to do is just prey on the right emotions and trigger the right thing. And that's all it takes. But it's so heartbreaking because he was wanting to protect his sister and she told him, she's like, if you get reincarnated, there's a chance you'll be with her again and you can protect her. But if you go to the void, it's all over. And he just, he couldn't, he was tainted with the same toxicity as the detective was. But I think that one important thing that she gets across to Deckham is like, what you're doing as an arbiter is not helping. I love that she addressed, she's like drawing out the darkness of one's soul. She's like, that's so easy for humans. Like every human has darkness in their soul. She's like, what are you accomplishing? I, I love that basically what she's saying is by exposing these people to trauma, you are infecting their heart with darkness. Like that's automatically triggering something. She's like, you, why are you doing this? Like you, you could have just like let the game be over. What more did you need to judge? And I like that there's also the implication that memories alone are not enough, right? They're not enough in this. She says, are these memories of the dead? And Deckham says, one cannot capture the true sense of a person from just their memories. Right, exactly. And, and I do agree with that, that you can't just base it. Because as we've seen with Queen, the memories themselves are just combog combogulated, like just big mosaics. They're not a full picture. They're just like a condensed version, right? But also... Um, something that we studied in the classes that I took for my for my college career is that I took some classes where we talked about memory and we talked about the way people write. And oftentimes, when you remember something, you remember it from a very distinct angle, right? And I don't I think I've mentioned it in this reaction series before, but you can read a story from about the same incident from two different people, and they will have totally different perspectives about that same incident. The incident is factual. The incident has happened, but their perspectives are totally different. And we can look at that. You see that in action in this episode with the sister who saw, who saw Tatsumi watching, watching as she was sexually assaulted, watching. And she said she thought he was a friend because who in their right mind would stand there and watch the entire thing and do nothing ex ex unless they were a friend. But he wasn't a friend. And it's so twisted. He was watching to make sure that he had done a bad act so it would justify him delivering justice. What the fudge? Instead of helping her. Because that, that, that is the crazy thing, right? The, the Tatsumi is so complicated because he was basically enacting, he was saying that if I had, if I had killed the guy, that wouldn't have been, f he's basically was saying, if I killed him without knowing for sure that he objectively was a perpetrator, then that wouldn't be fair. But I'm like, you knew when he started and you didn't do anything. And then he was saying that if he, if he didn't let him go to get away and then kill him, then he would do it again. It was, it's just, it's so messed up. But that's the logic of it. And it reminded me, we've talked about this series being similar to Death Note. I don't want to know how they're similar. I don't want to know that yet. But we've talked about it. And I'm like, uh, it kind of goes back to, and I guess, you know, if you've not seen Death, Death Note or don't want to be spoiled, then just kind of ignore this next part. And I'll, I'll do this when I'm done doing the spoilers for Death Note. But essentially, Light passed judgment on people who had done wrong acts. But he had to, if they had not done a wrong act, then he really didn't punish them. The only exception is really Naomi and her wrong act was trying to beat him. But everyone else had done something or were a threat to him, so that's why he attacked them. But unless they'd done that, he really didn't bother with them at all, right? Even if they were cruel people, if they hadn't technically committed a crime, then he wasn't going to punish them. And that's kind of the same, the same mindset that Light had with criminals in Death Note. Tatsumi seems to have with criminals in this until they and this is end of death note spoilers until they commit the act then they were technically innocent and couldn't be or shouldn't be punished which is messed up right because it's like it's like first of all and i get that i get that both shimada and tatsumi were dis were disengaged and disappointed with the system that was in place because it wasn't doing its job right 
which makes sense. But Tatsumi taking it to the level where he was going to be willing to wait and watch a girl get sexually assaulted because she needed to be a victim before he stepped up and did anything so he could do it with a clear conscience and feel like he was enacting actual justice is messed up. I just, oh my God. And he, the thing of it is, he just became dispassionate. Like the moment he, cause that, that's the thing. I'm watching so many series right now that talk about like the weight and sin of murder and what it does to your soul. Right. And from that point on, you just, you just kind of like, what else can we do? And so I, I feel like that with Tatsumi, once he killed that man that had assaulted his wife and murdered her from then on, it's like he got his revenge, but then he couldn't stop. It was like he was imbued with this sense of righteousness and justice and kept on killing other criminals. Like, he became a serial killer himself, which is wild, right? Which is wild. And then, but, but then I didn't get the same vibe from Shimada. It seemed like once he had committed, once he had killed the one guy, he was done. And... And that was it. That was going to be it. And he was just going to kill the second guy and then be over with it. And he, it wasn't like he didn't revel in it. He just, you know, wanted to be done. But then he kept getting egged on with this toxicity from Tatsumi and it just corrupted his heart. And it's so sad. And that's the thing. Like, the, the, the entire episode points out how these two are so similar. And I kept trying to differentiate and find ways to make them separate. But by the end of it, they ended up being the same. And it's just like they each corrupted each other. And the black haired girl tried so hard. And I like that she tried to get Deckham to stop. She was like, please stop. And he's like, I have to bring out as much darkness as possible. That's what it is to be an arbiter. And I feel like she's just kind of like, why does it have to be this way? And I wonder if the reason that Nona keeps her with Deckham is to make him question such things. Because Nona wants an arbiter to have the heart of a human. To be able to make better judgments. And maybe that's why she's letting her stay around him. Because Deckham seemed very affected by her at the end. Like, he seemed really affected by it all, right? The animation of this episode, like, them playing, like, the final rally was so freaking good. I was just floored by the final rally. It was just incredible. And just the idea of, like, all their organs starting to get hurt through the process of everything. Him, like, coming up from behind and stabbing the one guy. Now, my thing was, how did how did Shimada die, right? Because we didn't see any stab wounds on him. So, he we, show, we see him. Okay, but here's the thing. We see him stabbing. Like, the one guy reached for the kitchen knife. We see him stabbing, getting stabbed by Shimada. Okay. And then, yeah, okay. So, Shimada did get stabbed. There we go. Okay. So the guy with the guy, the guy that assaulted, he did stab Shimada in the back, right? He stabbed Shimada in the side and he bled out after he bled out after he tackled Tatsumi. So that's how, so they did, they all just stabbed each other, basically. Basically, they all just stabbed each other to death. It was very Shakespearean, very Shakespearean. Like, and he went to the, and the thing of it is, is that Shimada went to the bathroom to throw up, but he was so in shock from killing, he was so in shock from killing the one blonde guy, he didn't realize he'd been stabbed in the back. He didn't realize that it happened. He was so dis he was so disoriented from just killing that guy, it didn't dawn on him he'd been stabbed as well. So when he tackled Tatsumi and was stuck there, he just bled out and died. And then, and the thing of it is, is that she says, I want them dead for what they did. And that's hard. That is hard, right? Mm. Mm. That's hard. I, I I can I can say I understand where she's coming from. And that's a hard, you know, it's hard to to say it's hard to talk about it, but I can say that having had a not to the extent of her with the injuries and everything else not to that but having had a similar um situation i personally would not wish for that person to be dead i wouldn't wish for them to be killed but i feel like that's in part from from just you know what i've read what i've watched you know shows like these that teach you themes about how you know it's one thing to wish death upon people, but can you handle the consequence of that? You know, 
And, and things like anime and manga, I do think, help me to get through that and to kind of rationalize and go, and kind of like the black-haired girl go, it's not going to change anything. Me wishing that person to be dead is does nothing. It will not change what's happened. It's not going to change anything. It, it is what it is. Um, you can try to change mindsets with people who are alive so that it doesn't happen to other people. <laughs> In the future, you can do do measures to try to prevent those actions from happening, but... I can't I can honestly say that I wouldn't be in the same boat as her wishing that person to be dead, but experiences are different. People are different. And her in this moment, having just came off being sexually assaulted, yeah, I get why she would say that. And her him being her brother took it completely to heart and was like, that's what my sister wants, so that's what I'm going to do. And she said, I want them dead. The two of them. And then that's when they both realize, that's when he realizes that he has to go after him. And so the thing that we go back to Nona, Nona telling the black hair girl, she's like the most primitive emotion that people have is fear. It's fear. That's the primitive emotion and it drives everything. And so no, the black haired girl is realizing that the arbiters are bringing out this fear in people to try to get to their primitive emotions. But she's like, she's like, people aren't that complex. Like, you could find out how to judge them without making them go to the bitter extremes. Right? Because I think the case of Mayu is an example. She girl ain't girl got no bitter extremes, right? But in these guys' case, they're, they're two individuals who are so racked with despair that you really didn't need to torture them like this. And her even saying, like, what is this? Like, what, what is going on? What is this emotion that's happening? And then we see him killing the man killing the man that killed his wife and then like smiling after he's avenged her. And yeah, him and Shimada end up with the same expression after their vengeance. And at this point, Shimada was saying, let's just stop the game. Like, let's stop the game. Clearly Tatsumi's in trouble. And, and I thought that point that Shimada was going to be the one to get reincarnated. I thought he could be redeemed because I was like, he was the only one at this point. I was feeling like Tatsumi had kind of accepted his fate and once he had gotten revenge for his wife, it was like he didn't care anymore. He's like, I did what I needed to do. I don't care what happens to me. You got to go out and find your man. I'll sacrifice myself. And Shimada was like, no, I don't want you to do that. And I was like, okay, Shimada's going to come out being the better person for it. But then we find out that Tatsumi, like his involvement in all of this, and it's just insane. And he that's when he remembers after their rally, which is really really, really well done. And Shimada has the option. Shimada could let, it's tied four to four, he could let the man win. But he wants to protect his sister. And so that's kind of the driving force in this whole episode. He wants to protect his sister no matter what. So all of his actions go against what he truly wants to do because he believes that's what he needs to do is protect her. Like, did he want to win the rally at that moment? Probably not, but he did it because his urge to protect her was so strong. Did he want to torture that man? Probably not, but his sister wanted this certain thing to happen. And so he went with it and it's like, oh. it just, God, it's painful. And then the death counter. I love the death counter logo. It's so freaking good. Like that one's probably one of my favorites in the whole show so far. And then that's when he falls back and he sees, we don't even get to see the blonde guy's name, but that's when he goes in, sees him, and that's when he realizes that he's been killed by Shimada. The girl was the victim. And he holds up the knife. Is this what I was killed with? And he says, yes. I like that if you ask the right questions, Deckham will answer correctly. So if you ask why they're there, he won't answer you. But if you say, oh, well, you know, were we killed? And he's like, yes. <laughs> so as long as you answer, as long as you answer the right questions, he he'll give you an answer. But he kind of lies. He said you're gonna go either to heaven or hell. And the black haired girl's like, that's not true. That the heaven and hell is a lie in this world. He's like, this is just a tribunal of the soul. You're either gonna get reborn or you're gonna get sent to the void. And that's when Tatsumi tells him, like, you're the one who killed me. And we cut back to him go into the bathroom, not realizing he's been stabbed still. And I mean, he throws up probably because he's in shock and everything, but also, also he's bleeding out and dying. And that's when he notices, he says, one more to go. 
And he seems kind of disillusioned. I like that the backpack hides where he was stabbed, where you can't see it. You can kind of see in the episode, the darkness outline of the blood, but the backpack hides a lot of that, which is really interesting. You can't quite see it. So that's a clever move by the animation so that you don't know for sure. And that's when he hears somebody come in, thinks that it's the other guy, which surprise, it ends up being the other guy. Who would have guessed? And then he sees him and lunges at him. Yep. And stabs him. And they both fall down, right? And he like stabbed him there and he turns around to reach for him. But the arm doesn't quite make it, right? The arm doesn't quite make it. And he's like, sigh, I did it. And then that's when, yeah, they both fall down there and they die at the same time because you can see the blood coming from under the bag. You can see the knife wound. Okay. Yeah, I, the anime does a great job of hiding it. You don't know for sure, right? So fascinating. Okay. And they realize it. And the moment that Tatsumi says, having that damn guy's blood get inside my body galls me more than anything, even more than murder, I'm like, oh, you're not getting reincarnated. <laughs> I was like, that's not happening. So then at this point, you know that Tatsumi's going to the void and he probably doesn't care because he's gotten what he wanted. He got his revenge. He, he doesn't care about life anymore. But it's so tragic because Shimada had a chance. He had a chance to get out and be reincarnated and Tatsumi just kept goading him. He kept goading him. And the black hair girl tried to help him. He says, of course I was watching. And God, the animation there where he's just up against the tree. It's so creepy that she's sitting there and she locks eyes on him and sees him. And he's just staring. So messed up, y'all. So messed up. And that's when the black haired girl is like, I like that the black haired girl is like, make these memories stop. I don't want to see this because it all makes sense now. She's seen everything. She knows she's pieced it together and knows that Tatsumi was watching because she can see his memories, knows that Shimada was going after him and sees the sister in the aftermath. Like no wonder she was freaking out, right? And it's just, it's so damn sad. He's saying... For there to be judgment, there has to be a victim. And we see, like, all the different people. Like, he's killed, like, lots of people at this point. For there to be judgment, there must be a victim. It's very light Yagami thinking, right? If we're going to compare this to Death Note, it's very light Yagami thinking. And I'm just like, what the fudge? And of course... But I'm like, I'm with Shimada. Like, you could have done so much. You could have stopped it. You could have saved her. If you're a detective, you could have tracked him down anyway after you ran him off. If he was going to do it again, you're going to find out who he was again. Like, like that's such a flimsy excuse because you were you went to the forest and were watching him through the tree line. You clearly were following this guy. You could track him down again. He's not going to leave, right? <sighs> such a flimsy excuse. And, of course, it gets Shimano riled up and the black-haired girl makes them stop. If I didn't watch through the end, I couldn't pass judgment. And it's so creepy how Tatsumi likens himself to an arbiter in that moment. He likens himself to an arbiter saying, like, I'm passing judgment. It's what I had to do. Again, talk about Light. Light acting like a Shinigami, like an arbiter himself where he's passing judgment. Although, Light in Death Note had a god complex. Deckham and the other Arbiters do not want to be God. They, they just have accepted their fate as being, you know, Shinigami-like creatures who are just passing judgment. And that's it, right? And the Shinigami and Death Note don't even have to pass judgment. They just write names down. But yeah, it's like that man was stalking a lot of women. If it hadn't been your sister, it had been someone else. And the thing that's so sad is, like, they're both dead already. Like, in, at this point, it's just torture. At this point, it doesn't matter. They're going to get judged regardless. And Deckham says, what do you want me to do? And the black haired girl's like, that's enough. And he says, well, I'm not done judging. And she's like, what are you talking about? And then, of course, Shimada says he wants to kill him. And Deckham wants to, Deckham says he has not seen enough to pass a, an adequate judgment on both of them. And the black haired girl's like, yes, you have. You've seen enough. Quit trying to bring out the most darkness possible. 
He's like, it's necessary to assert Mr. Shimano's actions through the end. So I guess Deckard was saying, like, I'm going to put him in the ultimate temptation and see what he does. He's not been tempted enough. And the black-haired girl's like, if you keep running people up against a wall, eventually they're going to crash, right? Because it's just, it's too much. And the black-haired girl just tries. She's like, what you're doing is the same as what he did. Yeah. Everyone lives with the sins that they've committed. Everyone bears some hatred. How is inflaming that judgment? She's like, everybody gets mad. Everybody gets a moment where they have weakness. Why are you doing this and making them act up when you know that humans are flawed like this? Like, how is that judgment? Why are you doing it? And he says, well, I have to dark, lure out the darkness that lures in people's souls. And she's like, darkness, that's a laugh. I love how worked up she gets. She's like, you've never even lived. You don't understand the least bit about grief. And he tries to think, he tries to say that he does understand. And she's like, it's not just grief. She's like, there are as many emotions as there are people. The fragility of someone who lets their anger get the best of them. The strength to be able to over. And we see the woman from the arcade, you know, the, the you know, the ability someone has to let fear and anger overcome them. And then we see the girl from the one episode where she, she tells the lie, the strength to be able to overcome fear because of love. Yep. You can't comprehend anything about them. How can you possibly pass judgment on them? And Deckham's like, what? And Deckham's like, excuse me? Huh? And it's like, yeah, you know nothing about humanity. So how can you pass judgment upon them when you don't even understand the emotions that you're trying to invoke in them? I love that he's just like, like, just like the shocked Pikachu face of, Wait, I have to be human to understand humans? And she's like, yes, you moron. She's like, all you're doing is dredging up the darkness within people and saying, ah, yes, indeed, while you watch on impassively. And he's like, that's not... And I love that he goes to grab his heart. Like, that's not true. So I'm so curious, why did he grab his heart? Is that, is like what she was saying affecting him emotionally? Is our tin man, is our mannequin getting a heart and soul from her actions and her words? I mean, if she's saying these things, is Mayu saying the same thing to Ginty? But yeah, he, he tries to say it's not true, but him stuttering. She's like, once in a while, you foist them off with a hug. Is that what you call taking them in? You're just putting on an act, aren't you? And he kind of like, it's almost like, you know, Deckham.exe has stopped working. He's just like kind of malfunctioning, being like, I'm not like that. And she's like, yes, you are. She's like, you give them a little hug and send them on their way. And you call that forgiveness and understanding. She's like, you don't know. I like that she gets, she kind of like, I like that she lashes out at him. Because I really think that this is what he needed to hear. And what Nona had hoped that she would do. Maybe. But it's so fascinating seeing Deckham like visibly shaken by her words. Right? And clenching his heart. She says, this isn't right. What you're doing isn't judgment. And questions his entire role, his whole job. She questions everything. Like, you're not doing a good job. And then that's when Tetsumi says, you can't characterize a person. Anyone can turn out to be positively brutal. That line was just closer for me to cross than the others. Right. Anybody can cross that line. And we, we talk about it so much in all the shows that I've watched on this channel. It's so easy to cross that line. It's just a matter of, do you choose to do it or not? Right. And it's like, whatever Tatsumi's saying, he's like, after I took revenge against the filthy bastard that killed my wife, I got past my sorrow and anger and was just dispassionate. Like, he just didn't care anymore. I decided to live my life taking vengeance for victims. And I like the black-haired girl is like, shut up! <laughs> she just looks at him, the expression on her face is like, can you shut up for five seconds, you moron? Being a detective was a divine calling for me. And that's when like Shaman tells him to shut up and the black haired girl in order to accomplish anything, sacrifices must be made. And the thing that sucks about that is like at this point, like what sacrifices, what are you making happen? You you're both dead. You're just waiting on judgment. So what does it matter at this point? Just let him go. And she's like, you could see your sister in some other form. If you're reincarnated, the man watching your behavior is trying to judge you. And that's when Tatsumi says, is this part of the judgment as well? Like what he does. Yes, it is part of the judgment. And she asks if he cares to be with his sister. 
And that's when Tatsumi brings up the world is a cruel place. If you can't change the world, then you have to change yourself. Which I hate that line in this. I honestly hate it because it's so stupid. Because <laughs> in the context, right, what he's saying is that the world is cruel and the only thing that can change is yourself. And you, I, and you have to just mold around the cruel world and just be as cruel as the world itself is because you can't change it. It's a very nihilistic, very apathetic view of the world that I don't personally agree with. I'm like, that's bullshit. <laughs> we've seen so much, we've seen so many anime that prove that wrong that I'm like, no. And at this point, what got me was that that's the line, that's the, the dialogue that got Shimada to just cross over and start attacking him because he wouldn't shut up. But I'm like, dude, you're already dead. The world doesn't matter anymore. It's, and the thing of it is, in changing yourself and torturing him, all you did, you didn't change the world at all. All you did was ensure that you won't be a part of it and be reborn in it. That's all you did. And so I'm like, you just you just ruined your chance to be with your sister, which was your goal. How can you protect her if you're not going to be reborn, you dumbass? <laughs> I'm just like, why? Although, although visually, visually the ED map, the ED connecting with him like breaking the chips and everything and like him like bleeding out of the mouth as we go through like their life and everything as it flashes before his eyes like as we do that right and then him like crying and the thing of it is I thought for a second that I thought the Shimada was smiling but it's not it's the it's the man smiling right it's Tatsumi smiling like it's not oh it's awful like, what a devil. And the poor girl trying to... Trying, the poor black-haired girl tried to save him. And yeah, and then he just crumples. Now the one smile is he says, I'll, yeah, I swear I'll protect you. As, ugh. As that smile changes. I mean, basically, that evil smile, it's just like violence begetting violence. Like, it doesn't stop the cycle. It doesn't make it better. It just corrupts people, and it just keeps it going. Like, that's that's all it does. And it's so sad. Ugh. And then, man, Deckham just standing there while she punches him in the heart. Yeah, I just love that the black girl just punches him in the heart being like, you baka. People aren't as complex as you think they are. She's like, oh, I love she just punches him in the heart. She's like, they're simple and they get sad and angry over simple things. I like that she's doing this as she punches him. That's how they are. They're quickly affected by the littlest things and live without knowing whether they're gonna where they're going to fall down. She's like, that's who people are. As he looks down at her. And we see that the devil mask, where they both went. Oh, oh my God, y'all. Oh, buddy. Hmm. So, <laughs> so, um, my theory is that, um, my theory is that with our, with our dynamic duo there, and you know what? The rule of eight, the rule of eight is totally a predictor because here's the thing. Here's the thing, y'all. My my prediction is the rule of eight. The eighth episode leads us into the final act, right? Well, this two-parter is the turning point. It's the perpete into the final act. And so now, of course, black-haired girl's mad at Deckham because he basically, like, ruined this kid's chance of getting reincarnated by pulling him into this dark, deep darkness and trauma, saying, it like, it doesn't do anybody good. Like, all you do in pulling these people into darkness is just increase the odds of them going into the void rather than being reincarnated. She's like, is that the goal? And maybe that is the goal, right? They've been making a big deal this entire series about how there's too many people dying at once. Maybe the goal in this crazy world is to get as many people in the void as possible so that they're not reincarnated and the death rate is not as large as it has been. Maybe that's been the goal the whole time is Oculus wants them to get rid of as many humans as possible. Maybe that's the goal, that too many were getting reincarnated and now they're trying to like bring out all the evil in them so that they'll all get into the void. Maybe that's the case. Maybe that's been the goal this whole time. I don't know. But 
I, I have a feeling my prediction is next episode is going to be like, you know, the, the gloomy rain clouds, raindrops outside episode where she's mad at Deckham. And so she's like, I don't want to talk to you. And Deckham's like, I don't understand what I did wrong. <laughs> like one of those moments. And then they have to either make up for the finale or, or what? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait. Watch the next episode. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to wait. Ah, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a really sad, dark episode. Like it was really sad and dark and heartbreaking. And I'm like, show why? Why do you do this? Why do you make us so sad? But what can we do, right? What can we do? So I, I'm very curious to know your thoughts down below. What a wild episode, but I, I really enjoyed it and I hope y'all did too. So in the meantime, <laughs> I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back next week with episode 10 of Death Parade. Bye.